Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this early on a Saturday morning for what will be a great conversation. I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Shanice Gandon, and I am the COO of Africa Team Geeks. I studied chemical engineering, but my, techno my passions always lied in technology and coding and robotics. And with that being said, today's special guest speaker is from a company that I'm sure most people are aware of, uh, Facebook. For the kids that maybe don't know it, it's probably used by your parents. <laughs> With that said, I'd like to introduce my special guest, Barbara B Bafeno. Nefo. No, Nefo. Can I, did I say that right? <laughs> Very close. Uh, hi, I'm Barbara Bafeno. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara is a software man engineering manager supporting iOS developing experiences, whose mission is to provide best in class experiences for iOS developers at Facebook. Born in Nigeria, Barbara earned her master's degree in software engineering in France, then worked for Fortune 500 companies in France, Canada, and the USA. Prior to joining Facebook, Barbara led a six-time award award-winning UX design and engineering team in Hollywood. Barbara, thank you for joining us. I understand it's quite late where you are. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. And I'm excited to chat to you today. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to talk a little bit and at the end we're going to open up the, uh, the uh, board to questions from the audience. So keep all your questions towards the end of the video. So Barbara, let's start with what exactly does a software engineer do? Love that you asked that. Um, so software engineers are people who create and maintain uh, software applications and use them to solve problems. Um, and software is in everything. So, you know, like Shani said, like you said, if you use Facebook, you're using software. Um, software is in your phones uh, that you used to call your parents. It's in the apps that you use to play with each other, whether when you, the apps that you use for your games, it's in the apps that are in the rockets that go to the moon. They're, they're in the apps that are in the robots and the drones and the Roombas that you have at home. Um, software is everywhere. Software is absolutely everywhere. And so it's, it's a very exciting field to get into because you can apply software to solve any problem or make anything cooler or automate new processes anywhere in your life. I think there's not a single thing you can do on a phone or a computer or a tablet or anything that doesn't involve software. <laughs> Everything exactly. runs on software. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. So you work at Facebook. What is the coolest thing about your job? The coolest thing about my job, apart from the fact that I love doing it because I love, I see writing software as, as like solving puzzles and I really enjoy that. But the coolest part of my job is getting to work with very intelligent, very smart and very, very funny people um, who also like to apply their minds to writing software that gets to be used by billions of people on the planet like Facebook today is used by 2 billion people. Can you imagine writing an application that is used so widely It's kind of exciting. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that is very like fun about working at Facebook like before we before stay at home was in place before the pandemic. There's a lot of travel involved, so I could travel to meet my colleagues who work in other countries. I could travel to hackathons where students get together and have this little competition about creating the coolest software of the day and the winner gets a prize. Um, things like that make my day to day work like very exciting and the fact that I can do it anywhere in the world that I want to makes it a lot more fun. What do you what about you Shanice what do you think is really cool about <laughs> about being a software engineer. I think, you know, it's absolutely awesome that you can start off with something on a computer and you can work anywhere in the world. I think it's something that can, you work here, we're talking to you in South Africa and you're in California telling us about all things software. I think it's something that opens up doors further than anything. It's, it's in being an engineer helps you go out beyond your borders. It thinks bigger than where you currently are. You come to schools, you show kids what it's like in different countries. And I think, you know, most people think software engineers sit behind a computer and that's not true. No, it's, it's really not. <laughs> it's really not. 
Um, it's really not. That's exactly it. And and thanks to software, we can find out what is happening day to day to people just like us on the other side of the world. It's incredible. And we can do that in seconds. Before I got into school, we didn't even have email when I started becoming a software engineer. And talking to my parents meant calling the neighbor and hoping they were home and letting my parents in. And now I can just turn on WhatsApp and call my family. And it's, it's pretty incredible. Software, it really is that powerful. I mean, I didn't have it that far back, but I did start off maybe in grade seven with a brick phone that you played snake on. And <laughs> to see what we moved from that to where we are now, it's absolutely amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, cool. so you have a very fascinating story about how you arrived to where you are now. Can you tell me about your journey from starting out as a schoolgirl in Nigeria to working for some of the largest tech companies in the world? Yeah, so when I was a teenager, um, my father said, um, if you work very hard in school and you get really good grades, um, I want you to be competitive uh, with your age mates anywhere in the world. And I will send you to college in France and you will study. And part of me thought, this is too good. This might never happen. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. But he did, he, he kept his word and we got good grades. And I went to France with my older sister. And even though we were really good students back home, there were a lot of new things that we had to learn. And in the beginning we thought, oh, this is quite the struggle. Um, and we eventually caught up, but the one Thing we never struggled with. The one thing that I fell in love with immediately was software engineering because in our very first class, the teacher came in and said, I'm going to show you how to write Hello World. It's the simplest exercise in software engineering. It's just basically telling the computer to print out the two words, Hello World. Everybody does this the first time they code. And the second I saw Hello World show up on the screen, that was it for me. That was it. I was in love because I get I couldn't believe I could tell a computer what I wanted it to do and it would just do it. And I thought there's so much potential here. I can go on and create bigger programs, better programs. Let's see what else this can do. Um, and that was it. That was it for me. I have been coding ever since. And so I graduated college, got my master's. I worked in France for another five years moved to Canada, worked there for another four, four, I worked there for four years and then moved to Hollywood. And one day in Hollywood, I was sitting at my desk and, you know, coding away. And I got a call from this person, this number I'd never seen before. And she said, hi, my name is Christine and uh, I work at Facebook and uh, I wanted to see if you wanted to explore opportunities with us. Do you have a few minutes? And I just lost it. <laughs> I couldn't believe she was talking to me. Um, because in my mind, it's, it's Facebook, it's, it's incredible. And, uh, you know, I went through rounds of interviews and the first time I didn't get through and I thought, oh gosh, okay, I'm gonna go try harder. I'm gonna do this again. And I studied and I studied and I studied and I went back and crushed it. And by the time I was done with those interviews, I had, I had an offer from Facebook, I had an offer from Google, I had emails from Apple. I had an email from Amazon. Uh, I felt like I could do anything I wanted to. And it felt incredible to have that choice, to be able to go on and, and pick some of the biggest companies in the world to do what I really love. And that felt amazing. That is absolutely amazing to hear someone, you know, from Africa go around the world and to be headhunted by bigger, the biggest companies in the world. That's got to be an amazing feeling. It felt great. It felt like Christmas in my house for at least a month. Like I called my parents <laughs> and I told them, you will not believe what just happened to me. And they're like, we told you, we told you you could do this. We told you, you were that you were going to get multiple offers. My dad, especially, he's a very funny guy. Um, and he said, I told you, you don't, you didn't believe me. I told you this was going to happen. And, and now I get to do what I love every day with people that I enjoy talking to. That's amazing. So did your parents actually have a huge impact on your choice of career? Oh, absolutely. Um, so to kind of understand who I am, you have to understand who my father was. My father grew up in an era where a lot of women were just expected to stay home and take care of the house and cook and have the baby. So that was all that was expected of them. 
Um, but she married my grandfather, who was a judge. And so one day he asked her, what do you want to do with your career? And she said, I want to be a judge just like you. And he says, why, why shouldn't you be? That's, I think that's an amazing idea. Go, let's go do that and sent her to school. And she came back full-fledged judge. She still is a judge today. <laughs> um, and so my father grew up with this ingrained deep respect for women because he knew from a very early age that women can do anything men can do just as well, if not better. And he wanted his wife to have that. My mother is a doctor just like him. So he sees her, he sees them as equals. He even says, your mother is a better doctor than I am. Her grades were awesome. Um, and he transferred that to his children. And so he never told us, no, you can't do this. I don't think this is for you. This is beyond you. It's quite the opposite. He's like, shoot for the moon. You can do even more than this if you want to, like go for it. And so I've always had that support from them and I deeply appreciate it. That's great. I think they were probably, you just said that you spoke to them now. So that must be, they're still your biggest fans. <laughs> yeah, I just got off the phone with them a few hours ago. I told them I was going to be here and they're pretty excited and they know it's late. So they called me and they, they wanted to make sure I'd be awake for this call. <laughs> I mean, it's midnight in your side, so I don't blame you. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying being here. Oh, we're glad to have you. So your parents had such an involvement. What advice do you have for parents who want to get their kids involved in coding now? Yes, support them, you know? Um, like I, 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 ran, I have had friends who told me, they, oh, I told my parents I was gonna do software engineering and my parents said, what's that? Uh, that's not a real thing. And then they saw their children do software engineering and go on to have these incredible jobs um, and well-paid jobs at that because software really is everywhere. And if you work in places like these in Silicon Valley, you're very well paid and you can go on and build the life that you want for yourself. And everybody knows like when you empower a woman, you don't just empower one person you empower their entire family. Women are the bedrock of, of society. And so, yeah, it, it just, it has such a far reach and all it takes is one person saying like, I believe that you can do this. And that's how parents have this strong influence on their children telling them, you can do this. Um, be, and celebrate with your children when they, they've created new programs, ask to see it, check it out. Um, let them show you the cool things that they've built. Mm -hmm. Even I today, I still sort of show my parents like, look what I did on Facebook today. Two billion people can see this. Um, it's such a joy, right? So I don't, I don't know any parent in the world who would want to hold their children back from success. I think it's quite the opposite. Every parent wants the best for their children. And soccer has this liberating factor to it that allows you mm -hmm. to do whatever you want, wherever you want in the world. And that's very powerful. I think on, on my side in South Africa, we only really start doing IT in grade 10, which is quite late in your schooling career. And like you, the first thing we ever did was Hello World. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that changed my perception on coding because I never really liked maths before. But as soon as I started coding, that made a lot more sense. Yeah. It just started making more sense. And other subjects started making more sense because you learn about processes. And I think in my view, it would have been easier if I had started younger. Do you believe kids should start learning as young as they can? Oh, absolutely. Um, when I was a kid, my, my father thought we should start learning as quickly as possible. And fun anecdote that a lot of people don't know, we learned how to type on a keyboard without actually even having a keyboard. Long before we ever had a computer in my house, my brothers and sisters and I drew out a keyboard with pen and paper and practiced typing <laughs> just so, because my father would say, when, you're, when you get to school, everybody's gonna be able to type without looking. You need to be able to, to be good at this. And so by the time we got to college, that was it. We were so much faster than the people we were coding alongside because we were ready. But beyond that, I feel that 
coding is going to become sort of a second language for everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. it, there's mm -hmm. such a unifying factor to it because coding can solve problems or provide a way to solve so many of our local problems with software and you can do it from anywhere. And so by encouraging your child to code, signing them up for coding classes, making sure that you are supporting them and celebrating the wins, um, you are empowering your children from a very young age to be competitive on the world stage. So you are setting them up from success as early as possible. There's, there are very little limits to what you can do with software. And by letting your kids get in as early as possible, you're giving them the keys to the kingdom as early as possible. And I think that's really powerful. No, I 100% agree. It's kind of amazing to see someone who started off on a paper keyboard is now <laughs> at the biggest firms in the world. It's, it's kind of amazing. It's, you know, a lot of people think that coding is for a certain set of people. It, it's absolutely for everyone and everyone should do it. It's something that transcends borders. It's something that transcends language because, you know, you don't have to have, speak a specific language to code Java in a different <laughs> country. Or exactly. <laughs> Uh, so that's amazing. So you started this as a kid, maybe mainly through your parents. What inspired you as a kid? What were your interests? Um, as a kid, uh, I liked math. I was, I, I even signed up for further mathematics, uh, which was not a popular choice at the time. <laughs> but I liked math and I liked science, uh, biology, chemistry, physics. I loved all those things. Um, and a lot of people could have told me, oh, you know, that doesn't seem like a really girly thing to study. And they would have been so wrong. Um, I, I had an aunt who was a computer engineer. So from a very, very young age, I knew that this was possible. I absolutely knew that women could be software engineers. They could create programs, even though I'd never actually seen her do it. I just knew that was her job. And that was enough for me. I was rock solid in my belief that I could do that too. I think the idea of having a role model, someone you can see yourself in, is incredibly important. I didn't have a lot of women around me growing up, but I always had a lot of engineers around me, my, my parents and my uncles and everything, and they never let me believe I could be anything like that I didn't want to be. I, I, they always knew I'd be an engineer or the president, and that's what they put, put into me from the time I was a child, so by the time it came to selecting my career, I didn't think about a gender role. I didn't think that this is not for girls. It was an immediate choice that I've always grown up thinking I can be an engineer. And I think that's incredibly important to have a role model. Did you have any other role models in tech or do you have them now? Um, there are a few like role models that I have in tech, really big lofty goals. I think that there are a lot of women in my company, they might not be super public figures, um, but they have been behind a lot of the software that is used today in mm -hmm. Facebook and around the world, like open source software that exists today, they were behind it. And for me, I always wanted to be just like them. Um, they're, they're not household names, but it doesn't matter. For me, I, I got there and I just thought if she can do it, oh, I can definitely do this. I want to be just as fantastic. Um, so it's, it's very important to have people that you can look around and, and see. I don't know if you've seen um, Hidden Figures, this movie mm -hmm. called Hidden Figures, but I remember when the, it opened for the first time, the first five minutes, there was a little girl writing on the chalkboard and she was standing on a chair because she was so small and had to do this. And I remember thinking, I remember connecting with that immediately because I thought, oh God, that's, that's, that's me. That when I was a kid, that, that's, that was just like my childhood. And to see this woman go forward and write programs for NASA and do math for NASA, there weren't a lot of women around her at the time doing the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, so it's important to have people around you because you can, it inspires you. It lets you know that you can do it too. It's, it's really, really inspiring. Some of the first programmers were women. 
a lot of people don't know this, um, but they were women. So it's very important that we believe in ourselves and we know the history of software engineering and know that this is our place. We are here welcome just as much as anybody and just as capable as anybody else. I think if anything else, people are going to think of you as their new role model. And it's <laughs> wonderful speaking to you as someone who's gone through all of this and started out where we are now. What is it like to you to be a woman in color in the tech industry? Ooh, okay. So that's a doozy because um, I think that there, when I started out in tech, there were very few women of color in the companies that I worked at. I was often the only one. And a lot of women that I know today, women of color that I know today say exactly the same thing. Um, and I think sometimes it, it was challenging because I never really knew in ways like how to you know, interact with other people sometimes or what to do. Um, and over time, I just got more and more comfortable in my skin. And now I work in at Facebook. And for me, it was it's such a difference because the day I came in for my interview, they have these glass walls everywhere in the meeting room. So as I was, as I was walking with the interviewer past those meeting rooms, I saw so many women in those meetings and their posture, they just looked so confident. And when they spoke, they didn't shrink. They sat tall and they shared their ideas with the room with conviction and intelligence. And it felt incredible to be surrounded by more women like me. <laughs> and it helped me feel even more at home in my job. Um, so I think it's very important. Um, this, this leads into sort of a bigger concept of diversity in tech, it's important that there are more people from different backgrounds in technology, because unlike what most movies would have you believe, um, technology isn't just for one set of people, it's for everybody. The more people from different backgrounds who are coders, who provide software solutions, the more solutions we have, the better solutions we have because our backgrounds make us unique and give us unique takes about how to solve problems in our own societies. Nobody will understand um, the challenges of your country or where you live better than you. And if you have software engineering skills, you can go and help solve that problem because you know how to build solutions for it. You know what the problem space is and you know how you know you have the skills to go and attack it. So I feel it's very important for people not to feel intimidated or like that they don't belong in a space because they don't look like what the movies say because you're Unicity, the thing that makes you unique and different is actually what makes you special in technology. 100%. And then I, I've seen so many studies that show how having women or just diversity as a whole improves a company's status. It improves a company's bottom line. And no one understands your problems like you do. So I think that's why Africa Teen Geeks is particularly focusing on, you know, creating the next generation of tech innovators. It's Africans to solve African problems. Um, not the saying that the same thing can't happen in America, but I think we have so much potential here in Africa, and I think that needs to be leveraged. It does. It, does. it, it really does. I think to give an example, um, there was a woman, woman of color, um, who worked at Facebook a long time ago, and she was working on this uh, facial recognition software. Mm -hmm. And she says, I was sitting next to my colleague who is not a person of color and the camera kept panning to my friend and never recognized my face. And she didn't just go, oh, well, she thought, no, 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 no. I'm a woman in technology. <laughs> I'm going to solve this problem. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, she basically helped create a whole new standard for facial recognition in tech. 
so that people like you and me get properly recognized by software. It's, it's a pretty incredible achievement because this is a very complex uh, problem set. And she was able to galvanize software engineers and use code to create solutions for herself and for people just like her. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's incredible what Africa Teen Geeks is doing because they're empowering people to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Thank you. That's, I think that's the mission. And if anyone's listening, you have the potential. So if you spot a problem, solve it. We'll help you. This is what we're here for. And lastly, I think this is the most important thing is what advice can you give to our kids, particularly African girls that now look up to you? Um, don't limit yourself. Do not limit yourself. Don't listen to anybody who tells you this is not for you. Go for it. Just go for it. This is your time. This is your space. Um, all you need to be successful is a working mind. Just apply yourself to what you want to learn, what it is you want to do, because this is your space as much as it is anybody else's. There's no such thing as a job that is not for you. There is no such thing as, as a career that is not for you. There's no tech, there's no programming language that is not for you. Um, you can take your Java and your Python and, and you can, you know, your PHP, whatever it is, you can get into robotics, you can get into artificial software, business applications and build the life that you want for yourself. Software engineer, like software engineering, like we said earlier, is in everything. It really is in everything. It's all over the world. And so it's an incredibly liberating thing to know that your mind, being able to use what is in your mind to create real software in the real world can take you all around the world. I've traveled all around the world just because of my job. I have lived on three continents just because of my job. And and I started out as a little girl in Africa, in Nigeria, like a lot of you. Um, so there is no limit to what you can do. Just believe in yourselves. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Go for it. I think I can personally speak for myself where I say I am inspired by the way you speak. I'm inspired to want to do more even at my level. I want to go out and show everyone what engineering, software engineering can do, what tech can do. Um, I think it's really encouraging to see that you did start out where a lot of our kids are starting out and you're pretty much taking the world by storm. Uh, I think that's an incredible thing to see and I think it's great to hear from someone you know who looks like you or it's someone who's relatable and understands what it's like to be a woman of color in this industry, what it's like for girls who have this interest in maths and now they feel a little nerdy and you know what they can do with that type of potential. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing not to just set yourself up for smaller thoughts. You can always grow bigger than you are right now. You can always go beyond borders. So I think the most important thing I've learned from you is, you know, don't think small. You yeah. have all this potential. Uh, yeah. Use it. <laughs> so, That's a way. Thank yeah. you so much. This has been an absolutely amazing conversation. I'm glad that we got to talk to you today. And we're so grateful that you joined so, so late in California. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for setting this up. It, I've had a wonderful time talking to you. Thank you. That's wonderful. I am now going to open up the floor to questions. So if, if anyone has a question, please feel free to raise your hand or type it in the box and we will answer. I see our first question has come through already from Khotso. What subjects did you do in high school? Oh, yes, high school. Um, I did, we had so many subjects, but the, the top ones were math. I did mathematics. I did further mathematics, uh, biology, chemistry, physics. I was very science minded. Um, I also did a little bit of the arts, just a little bit, you know, for fun. Uh, but I, my top pro projects or subjects were math and science. That works. I think it's very similar. I think the only difference is I added accounting because in high school, I really didn't know <laughs> uh, where to start. But IT and accounting were also on my list. Karabo, yeah. awesome. um, your hands up. 
Okay, here we go. Um, my question to ask is, was it easy when you first started coding? Like, was it a bit hard or, yeah. or was it more of a, like a breeze? Was it more like what? A breeze. Was oh. it easy <laughs> or hard? Yeah, thank you so much for asking that. Um, Karabu, how old are you? 11. 11, oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> it's very nice to meet you, first of all. Um, thank you. And you're, you're coding too, before I even get to the answer. Are you coding <laughs> right now? Are you writing software right now? Um, I think I'm going to start writing software, but I'm coding right now. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, was it easy? Uh, the first day was very easy. I, I will be honest. Hello World is a very simple program. <laughs> 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 Have you gone through that exercise where you write Hello World in the computer and you see it on the screen? I think I'll try it. Yeah. I hope yeah. you will too. See if you like it. it. The first day was very, very easy. If you have a good yeah. teacher, um, you can, they can guide you in how to set this up. Um, you, can, you can also try and figure it out on the web, but I find that, like having a teacher helps me um, and it was pretty easy. Of course, the programs get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go further <laughs> along. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how, many, how many lines do you, of code do you think you'd have to type to create an application like Facebook? Do you want to guess? Um, probably five, six, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love this it actually it's millions there are millions of mm -hmm. lines of code in facebook absolutely millions mm -hmm. of lines of code don't worry i didn't write it all myself <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there are thousands of engineers who work together um to build facebook and because i've heard many engineer i've heard many people have went on in college to become engineers yeah and i've actually been looking at my a lot of a big school that people go to which is harvard mm. one of the schools i want to go to Ooh. Um, Ooh. i like I'm it study, i'm studying engineering there hopefully Hopefully that coding will help me get that. Oh, well, then I wish you the very, very best. I hope you do make it. Um, Harvard is wonderful. I think you would love it. Uh, and I hope mm -hmm. you really do make it because I hope, I think your family would be very, very proud of you. I'm sure they're already very proud of you today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. It's so nice talking to you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> It's funny that you should mention it in, in my final uh, project for matric grade 12. Uh, our project was to create our own version of Facebook. Really? It was indeed. And uh, it was the most difficult task I've ever had to do. I think <laughs> I got through half the functionality and we were on maybe 10,000 lines of code. And I was just like, I give up. I can't do this. <laughs> As one person, it's not possible to do it. No, there's so much of it. There's so much that has to work together for an application like that to work. Definitely. Liwiwe, your hands up. Here we go. Let's give Oscar him a second. Oh man, 11 though, so young, my goodness, that's wonderful. It's amazing, we've got kids of all ages coding. Hi. Oh, there you Hi. go. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Olivia, where did you I'm go? Good. You're good? I'm still here. <laughs> How old are you? I am um, 7 turning 8 going to grade 3. Wow. I started when I was 6. 6? That's amazing. <gasps> wow. You started almost. 
you should be yes in the class. So when I when she tries to find a school, yeah, I'm the same age as everybody else. Wow. Seven going My eight. Eight, eight is a lot. Yeah. My father does coding in Texas, and, and I'm also going to do coding. Oh. I think that's wonderful. I, I need to start soon with more coding. <laughs> At eight, you, you're going to start. Program. Um, because every game I play um, um, on the phone. Oh yeah. I I always make out the code faster than I faster than I do. I don't even need to go find a guy on Facebook. <laughs> I can just I can just find him. I just know the codes. It's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> I love your confidence. It's amazing. Wow. A coder at eight. That's pretty impressive. I think that would be, I, you might, you might try to set a record on that. That's very young. Um, but I love that you're trying to get into technology just like your dad. I think he, it's pretty impressive. Wow. Hmm. I think Lumbala is next. Let's see. Hi, Lumbala. How's it going? Morning. Morning. Uh, how, how many codes does it take to make a, a, a program work, work? Well, that depends on the program. Uh, some programs are very, very simple. Uh, if you do the Hello, Hello World exercise, it's probably a line or two of code, maybe four or five tops. Um, and some programs are very, very complex. Uh, if you have games on your iPad or on your phone, they probably take, I don't know, maybe 40, 50,000 lines of code. It really depends on what you're creating. Uh, so you get to decide how much code you put into your program to make it work just right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We have a typed question from Hotso asking what subjects must I do at high school to be an engineer? Ooh, great question. Uh, it depends on what your high school offers. Um, but, uh, cause in my high school, we didn't have any computer engineering at all. Um, I just did math and science, but in order to become a software engineer, you have to study computer science. Um, to, it's a good thing if you study computer science, it helps you understand how to create programs in what environments you can create them and how these things work, how design principles work. Because as you get better and better at coding, there are more and more sophisticated uh, ways of writing software. There are different ways of writing different types of software. Um, and so that, that comes a lot later on when you're in university. But for high school, if your high school offers computer science, I would take that to get started nice and easy. From a South African point of view, for engineering courses as a whole, you do need to study maths and science. But if your school does offer CAT or IT, particularly IT, that would be a really good advantage for you. Yeah, yeah. I see another message that's come through and asking, what are, what are the challenges one can face in the industry? Oh, that is a really great question. It depends. Uh, there are a lot of different challenges. Um, there are challenges based on, <sighs> I would like to get clarification on this question because I really want to know what challenges they're concerned about particularly, but um, there are challenges based on finding jobs. For example, you have to put your resume out there and apply to jobs so that people can find you. Um, there are challenges about uh, the software that you're creating because sometimes you can write a program and you don't know how something works inside the program, so you have to go and research it. 
Um, so you can you know, pull up Google and try to figure out how that particular line of code or API as we call it um, works. Uh, there can be challenges about storing data. So when you get bigger and better about writing software, you might have to store your data somewhere. Um, and then there are challenges in just day-to-day -day things. For me, one of the challenges was uh, being the only girl in the office sometimes because I didn't know where all the other women were and I wanted to hang out at lunchtime with other women sometimes. Uh, so it really depends on what challenges, there are lots of challenges, but there are also a lot of rewards. Um, and that's why I stick with it because I find it very rewarding and I enjoy it. That's great. Lumbala, do you have another question? Ma'am, why do we need coding? Okay, um, why do we need coding? That is an excellent question, Lubala. Uh, do you have a phone? Yes. Yeah. Do you have games on the phone that you like to play? Yeah. Yeah. Your games are written with code. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we need coding so that we can have things that we enjoy doing because without coding, you wouldn't have the games on your phone that you enjoy. All that is written with code. Uh, and I think over time you could write new games yourself if you wanted to. Um, code is in everything. It really is in everything. If, you, if you're sending a rocket to the moon, there's code in it too. <laughs> if you are just you and me talking now over Zoom, Zoom is code. Uh, everything we use on a computer runs on code. Uh, and it helps us connect with each other a lot more easily so that we can just call each other in a second if we want to because of code. You can call your grandma uh, if she's on the other side of town, thanks to code. Um, if, you're, if you need to call a cab or an Uber, you can do that because you have code. So there's a lot of things that code does and to make life easy. So that's why we need code, yeah. Thanks, ma'am. Yeah, no problem. We have a question in the chat of which university did you go to? Great question. I went to a university called Université Joseph Fourier. Uh, that's kind of French for uh, Joseph Fourier University in Grenoble in the south of France. Um, it was a lovely university and I learned a lot there and I had a really great software engineering teacher. I think she still works there today. She's actually a researcher. And she specializes in um, uh, human machine interaction. So that was a lot of fun. And then I moved on to another school called Polytechnique Grenoble, which is basically uh, in English, Grenoble Polytechnic or the Institute of Science and Technology of Grenoble. And it was good. I spent three years there and I did three internships. So when you're getting older and you wanna go into the uh, start working, which is a long way off for a lot of you. Um, one of the easiest ways to transition into working is to get an internship because it allows you to do a little bit of work in a real company while you're still a student and try things out and see what you like doing and what kind of software you like creating for while you're working in a company. So I did that three times before I started working uh, for real. I think, yeah, it's, it's part of a university requirement to actually have some sort of internship yeah. during your degree. I think it's only two weeks, but it, it helps, it does. Um, Karabo, I think this will have to be our last question. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Karabo's questions are fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question, my other question is, yeah. if wanted to create say a random game I don't know what it's called it's very much of an example um you said that Facebook need you needed 1,000 lines to make it <laughs> millions um, millions that's a thousand no. thousand lines and then some. <laughs> but <no. laughs> to create maybe a Maybe if I wanted to create a game, would I need a million lines? 
No, no, probably not. You probably wouldn't need a million lines. It depends on the game. Uh, mm. But if you're creating a very simple game, you're probably a lot smaller, you know? Depends on how you want to create your game. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If it's a simple game where you just like show a dot on the screen and make sure people can click it, that should be a very simple game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank I think you. we have Thank you, one more question if you're okay with that. Um Bohlale, and do you want to ask your question? Hi. Are there are there international scholarships to study IT engineering? Ooh, wonderful question. I believe there are. You'd have to, mommy and daddy would have to help you search for those using Google. Uh, but yes, there are international scholarships to go and study software engineering. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think the questions from the kids are my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. Um, Barbara, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you. It has been a great conversation, very inspirational. And we, Africa Teen Geeks, is thanking you very much on behalf of our, our organization, of our kids, and of everyone who's joined the call. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've loved talking to you. I've loved talking to the kids. They're amazing. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see what they do when they when they start coding. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye.